Good morning, everyone. We are here for story time. My name is Elizabeth. Welcome to everyone joining us this morning. Great to have you here. Or if you're watching later, that is great too. Uh, welcome to all. I wanted to remind everyone that we have a Saturday morning program every Saturday at 11 a.m. for kids of all ages that we've created that is a variety show called The Saturday Show. There's different themes each week and it's super fun. So if you haven't tuned into that yet, check it out. And I also wanted to let anyone with younger children know that we have launched um, Baby Time, which is a program more for parents and caregivers of uh, babies ages zero to two. But there are certainly some aspects that if you wanted to um, have your baby watch, they could. But it's, it's ideas and suggestions and um, pretty much just activities, stories, rhymes, bounces, things you can do with your baby at home that don't require um, money or you leaving the house or anything like that. So tune into that. That's at, on Monday mornings, um, baby time. We've had uh, three episodes so far and we're going to be continuing that every week. There's also great songs from our wonderful musician Betsy. Um, and so those are really fun to play for your baby or to sing to your baby too. She has tons of, of great tunes that she uh, has shared with us to incorporate into the program. So that's baby time Monday mornings. Keep that in mind for those of you who maybe have younger children or if you have a younger sibling, tell your parents if they um, they might be interested in, in tuning into that. All right, that's my spiel. Sorry about that. Let's get started and say hello to everybody. Let's see your hands. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as fast as we can. Hello! Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as slow as we can. Hello! Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as high as we can. Hello! Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as low as we can. Hello. Great job. Couple more. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as loud as we can. Hello. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's Say hello as soft as we can. Great job, everybody, and thanks again for being here today. Can I see your fingers? Open them, shut them, open them, shut them. Give a little clap, clap, clap. Open them, shut them, open them, shut them, lay them on your lap, lap, lap. Creep them, creep them, creepy, creepy, creep them, right up to your chin, chin, chin. Open wide your little mouth, ah, but do not let them in. Shake them, shake them, shake them, shake them, just like this, this, this. Roll them, roll them, roll them, roll them. Blow a little kiss. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> Excellent job, everybody. All right, it's time to find out what our letter of the day is. And today it is F. And I think I might have had F last time that I did story time too, but it is a different theme today. I think last time I did food, but today we have stories about the farm. We're going to have lots of great stories about farms and farm animals and even a story that takes place on a ranch, which is kind of like a big farm. Anyway, F is our letter of the day today. And I know some of you are playing the summer game, so I want to share with you our summer game code, which is fun on the farm. So get that in for your points for watching story time today. I'll show it one more time at the end too, and it's always in the video description if you need it. So fun on the farm. And before we settle into our first story, let's take our big stretch out wide. Big stretch up tall. Give yourself a hug. Tap your knee. Tap your nose. Tap your ear. Find your elbow. One more big stretch out wide, big stretch up tall. Ah. All right, let's settle in for our first story, which is called Cock-a-Doodle Quack Quack. Kind of silly, right? Well, once upon a time, there was a baby rooster. And it was his job to wake everybody up in the morning, but there was just one problem. He didn't know what to say to wake everybody up. So he decided to go and see his friends, the pigs. I guess I should reverse them. The pigs. Uh, hello pigs. It's my job to wake everyone up in the morning, but I don't know what to say. What do you say? Oink. Oink, oink, said the pigs. Oink, oink, oink. <gasps> oh, that's a good idea, said Baby Rooster. I'll try that tomorrow. And the next morning, as the sun was rising in the sky, Baby Rooster climbed onto the fence, took a deep breath. Let's all do that together. <gasps> and at the top of his voice, he said, cock a doodle oink 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 but nobody woke up nothing happened at all so baby rooster went to see his friends the cows hello cows it's my job to wake everybody up in the morning but i don't know what to say what do you say moo said the cows. Oh, that's very good. I'll try that tomorrow, said Baby Rooster. And the next morning, as the sun was rising, Baby Rooster climbed to the fence. He took a big breath. Ready? And at the top of his voice, he said, Cock-a-doodle, moo. And nothing happened. Nobody woke up. Well, the next day he went to go see the ducks. He said, hello ducks, it's my job to wake everybody up in the morning, but I don't know what to say. What do you say? Quack, 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 quack. <gasps> oh, that's very good. I'll try that tomorrow, thanks, said Baby Rooster. And the next morning he climbed onto the fence. He took his big breath. <gasps> And at the top of his voice, he said, Cock-a-doodle, quack, 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 quack. But nothing happened. Nobody woke up. Well, Baby Rooster was very sad. Oh, he walked slowly across the barnyard, not knowing what to do. He ran into Cat. Baby Rooster, what's wrong? asked Cat. 
Oh, I'm supposed to wake everybody up in the morning, but I don't know what to say. I've tried almost everything. Oh dear, that is a dilemma, said Cat. You'd better go see the wise old owl. He'll know what to do. So Baby Rooster slowly walked up to the huge barn where Owl lived. He knocked on the door. <coughs> Who's there? said Owl. Come in! Please, can you help me? said Baby Rooster. It's my job to wake everyone up in the morning, but I don't know what to say. The wise owl thought for a moment and then smiled. My friend, tomorrow, as the sun is rising, go down to the farm gate and sit there very quietly. Don't say anything, just listen. Then you will know exactly what to do. Well, that night, Baby Rooster hardly slept at all. He was very puzzled. He still didn't know how he was going to find out what to say. At last, the sun began to rise. Baby Rooster got up and walked down the lane. He stood on the farm gate and he listened very carefully. It was very quiet. Shh! Baby Rooster couldn't hear anything at all. But he remembered the wise owl's words and he listened again. Then, Baby Rooster heard a noise coming from the farm next door. He listened very, very carefully. He tried to copy the noise. Cock-a-noodle new! Nothing happened. Nobody woke up. He listened again. He took a deep breath. <gasps> Cock-a-poodle-poo! Still nothing happened. Nobody woke up. He listened as carefully and quietly as he could. He took a giant breath. <gasps> cock a doodle doo And you know what happened? Everybody woke up. At last, Baby Rooster knew how to wake everyone on the farm up. cock a doodle doo He was so pleased and so happy and so tired that he fell fast asleep. But he was up early the next morning to wake everyone up again. The end. Great job listening, everyone. Let's stand up to stretch our legs a little bit. You know I can't stand up because I have to stay on the screen, but you should stand up. And we're going to do a little dance you probably know called If You're Happy and You Know It. Goes like this. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, say hooray, hooray. If you're happy and you know it, say hooray, hooray. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, say hooray, hooray. If you're happy and you know it, do all three. Clap, clap, stomp, stomp, hooray. If you're happy and you know it, do all three. Clap, clap, stomp, stomp, hooray. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, do all three. Clap, clap, stomp, stomp. Nice job, everyone. Let's sit back down for our next story. Settle in. Can I see your fingers? I have 10 fingers. They all belong to me. I can make them do things. Do you want to see? 
I can make them jump high. I can make them jump low. I can fold them tight and hold them just so. I can squeeze them tight. I can open them wide. I can wave them all around. I can make them all hide. I can make them jump high. I can make them jump low. I can fold them tight and hold them just so. Excellent job, everyone. All right, we have a book to read next, one of my personal favorites. I just have to reach and get it. Okay, this is called Click, Clack, Moo, Cows That Type by Doreen Cronin. Farmer Brown has a problem. His cows like to type. All day long he hears, click, clack, moo, click, clack, moo, clickety, clack, moo. At first he couldn't believe his ears. Cows that type? Impossible. Click, clack, moo, click, clack, moo, clickety, clack, moo. Then he couldn't believe his eyes. There was a note from the cows on the barn door. Dear Farmer Brown, the barn is very cold at night. We'd like some electric blankets. Sincerely, the cows. It was bad enough the cows had found the old typewriter in the barn. Now they wanted electric blankets. No way, said Farmer Brown. No electric blankets. So the cows went on strike. They left a note on the barn door. Sorry, we're closed. No milk today. No milk today, cried Farmer Brown. In the background, he heard the cows busy at work. Click, clack, moo. Click, clack, moo. Clickety, clack. Moo. The next day he got another note. Dear Farmer Brown, the chickens are cold too. They'd like electric blankets. Sincerely, the cows. The cows were growing impatient with the farmer. They left a new note on the barn door. Closed. No milk, no eggs. No eggs, cried Farmer Brown. In the background, he heard them. Click, clack, moo. Click, clack, moo. Clickety, clack, moo. Cows that type, pens on strike. Who ever heard of such a thing? How can I run a farm with no milk and no eggs? Farmer Brown was furious. He got out his own typewriter. Dear cows and hens, there will be no electric blankets. You are cows and hens. I demand milk and eggs. Sincerely, Farmer Brown. Duck was a neutral party, so he brought the ultimatum to the cows. The cows held an emergency meeting. All the animals gathered around the barn to snoop, but none of them could understand moo. All night long, Farmer Brown waited for an answer. Duck knocked on the door early the next morning. He handed Farmer Brown a note. Dear Farmer Brown, we will exchange our typewriter for electric blankets. Leave them outside the barn door and we will send Duck over with the typewriter. Sincerely, the cows. Farmer Brown decided this was a good deal. He left the blankets next to the barn door and waited for Duck to come with the typewriter. The next morning, he got a note. Dear Farmer Brown, the pond is quite boring. We would like a diving board. Sincerely, the ducks. Click, clack. 
quack, click, clack, quack, clickety, clack, quack. The end. Great job, everybody. That's one of my favorite ones. All right, we have a couple more stories today. I think we have time for both of them. Maybe we should take a little stretch first. Let's wiggle our arms and wiggle our heads and wiggle our fingers. Can you wiggle your ears? Can you wiggle your legs? Wiggle your toes. Wiggle your shoulders. Wiggle your nose. One more arm wiggle, stretch up, stretch down, go all around town. All right, let's at least get one more story in and see where we are. This one is called, Are You a Horse? Well, Cowboy lived on a ranch and it was his birthday. His friends made him a cake and they got him a birthday present. When he unwrapped it, what is this thing? Cowboy asked his friends. It was a saddle and luckily it came with instructions. Step one, find a horse. Step two, enjoy the ride. Well, Cowboy wasn't exactly sure what a horse was, but he couldn't wait to try out his new saddle. So he went out in search for one. The first thing Cowboy came to was squeaky and rusty. Howdy, are you a horse? Cowboy asked. Nope, I'm an old wagon, said the wagon. A horse is a living thing. Oh, okay, said Cowboy. See you later. Next, Cowboy came to a tall, prickly thing. Howdy, are you a horse? I bristle at the thought. I am a cactus, said the cactus. A horse is an animal. Oh, okay, said Cowboy. After that, Cowboy came to a wiggly, hissing thing. Howdy, are you a horse? A horse has legs. I'm a snake, said the snake. Okay, said Cowboy. See you later. A skittery, pinchy thing ran past Cowboy on the ground. Howdy there, you have plenty of legs. Are you a horse, said Cowboy. A horse. A horse? I'll pinch you good. A horse is friendly. I'm a crab, said the crab. Now go away. Whew. Okay, said Cowboy. I'm glad that wasn't a horse. Cowboy saw a climbing bug-eyed thing smiling at him. Howdy, are you a horse? asked Cowboy. I can be green or brown or purple, it said. But can you be a horse? asked Cowboy. No, but a horse can't change colors like me. I'm a chameleon, said the chameleon. Okay, well I'm looking for a horse, so I'll see you later, said Cowboy. Cowboy came to a tree with a feathered hooting thing on a branch. It didn't turn green or brown or purple. Are you a horse? he asked. Who, me? Certainly not. A horse doesn't lay eggs. I'm an owl, said the owl. Oh, okay, I'll see you later, said Cowboy. Cowboy saw a humongous snorting thing rolling around in a mud, mud puddle. He didn't see eggs anywhere. Howdy, are you a horse? Not me. A horse is clean. I'm a muddy pig, said the pig. Oh, okay, see you later, said Cowboy. Cowboy spotted a furry, upside-down thing hanging from a branch. Howdy, you look pretty clean. Are you a horse? A horse is 
very fast. I am a slow sloth, said the sloth. Got it. All right. See you later, said Cowboy. Next, Cowboy saw a romping, growling thing. Howdy, are you a horse? Rawr, a horse eats grass. I am a man-eating lion, said the lion. Are you a man? Uh, nope, I'm a cowboy, said Cowboy. See you later. After that, Cowboy came to a quiet black and white thing that was eating grass. You must be a horse, said Cowboy. I'm not a horse, I'm a zebra, said the zebra. A horse doesn't have stripes. Well, Cowboy was very upset. Why can't I find a horse, he shouted. Just as he was about to give up, he met one last creature. It seemed like a lively animal. It had legs. It was friendly. It didn't change colors or lay eggs. It was clean and fast. It loved eating grass and it didn't have any stripes. Cowboy was overjoyed. Are you a horse? asked Cowboy. Of course, said the horse. Well, I have a saddle, said Cowboy. Would you like to go for a ride? Yes, said the horse. And so... They did. The end. That's not how that's supposed to work. All right. Awesome job, everybody. We have one more short story before we finish today. It's kind of similar to our cockadoodle quack quack because it's about a farm animal that says something that it doesn't usually say. And this one is called Ribbit. Once upon a time, there was a pond that was home to a family of frogs. But one morning, they discovered a surprise visitor. It was a pig, a little pink pig sitting on a rock. Goodness, said the frogs. Why is there a pig in our pond? The chief frog spoke up. Ahem. Good morning. What can we do for you? And to their amazement, the pig answered, Ribbit. What did he say? cried the frogs. Does he think he's a frog? Is he making fun of us? But again, all the little pig said was, Ribbit. Ribbit. News of the little pig who thought he was a frog spread fast. This new relative of yours is a little pink. He's no relation of ours, declared the frogs. He certainly sounds like a frog. Why would a pig want to be a frog? What's wrong with being a frog? Asked the frogs. Everyone started shouting at each other while the little pig just sat there practicing his ribbit, ribbit. Finally, the chief frog cried, we must go find the wise old beetle. He'll know what to do. The wise old beetle? <gasps> Gasped all the animals, but he hates to be disturbed. I know, said the chief frog, but this is very serious. So off they went. And the little pig said, mm, Ribbit? The animals found the wise old beetle and tried to explain the problem. In the end, he agreed to go with them to the pond. But when they arrived, the little pig was gone. Where did the pig go? The animals cried. Who was he? What did he want? Maybe, said the wise old beetle. He just wanted to make new friends. And off he went. Oh dear, said the animals. They hadn't thought of that. 
And sure enough, sitting high up in a tree nearby was the little pig saying, tweet, 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 tweet. And he was surrounded by new friends soon. Tweet, 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 tweet. The end. Great job today, everyone. Thanks for listening to all the farm stories. Just one more reminder, our summer game code today was fun on the farm. And thanks for tuning in. We will see you next time.